Now I've just put into the small town of Barham to show you a few things. And the first thing is this bridge behind me. Now, if you have a close look at it, you can see that it's quite an interesting piece of engineering. What it's designed to do is allow the paddle steamers underneath by keeping the bridge relatively close to the ground. You see, the paddle steamers would come down the river behind me in the olden days, and the water levels would be a lot higher. And when they approached this bridge, the centre section on these huge cables would then lift straight up in the air, the paddle steamer would pass underneath, would then lower the bridge back down, and they'd continue using it as normal. It's a very, very good idea, and they're very interesting to look at. So if you ever see one up close, take a good look and, and you'll be quite impressed. So this next place up here that we're going to stop might give you a bit better of an idea on what it would have been like uh, back in the time when everyone was clearing this land and settling it for the first time. You see, they had to, they had to clear all the trees and once they were fallen, then they had to move them. And to move the huge logs, they used wagons like we see here. And this is called a log buggy. For the loggers would cut the trees down and then cut them up into huge sections like we see here. And then by using huge ramps and pulleys, they would then haul the logs up onto the buggy. They were then taken by bullock teams to a nearby mill. Now before we get too far away from the bridge, I'll explain another thing about it too. Years ago there was a law passed that said no vessel could go under a bridge at more than four miles an hour. And the problem occurred because the paddle steamer towing a barge downstream, its average speed would be between eight to 10 miles an hour. So we have our paddle steamer here and our barge and our bridge. So the way they got around this was traveling downstream. The captain would get his men to unhook the barge. They then allow it to float past. They'd take the rope from the front of the barge and the rear of the paddle steamer and transfer it back to front so the barge was in front and the rope was tied onto the back of the, paddle, uh, the, back of the barge in front of the paddle steamer. The captain would then put the paddles in reverse and slow the whole lot down. It would then pass under the bridge at about four miles an hour. They'd get under and then transfer it back to the original way and they'd carry on. Only to get to the next bridge and have to do it all again, undo the ropes, let the barge float past, hook it back on, paddles in reverse, slow down, go under the bridge, transfer it back and carry on again. And this went on around and around and around, no matter how many bridges there were, that's how they had to do it. Now this place here is called Cemetery Bend, and it's called that because just up there in the bush a little bit is the gravesite of two little girls. You see, there used to be a mill in this area in around the 1880s called the 100 Mile Mill. And it was called that because of its location, which is about 100 miles downstream from Echuca. And the family that ran this mill, it was their two little girls that sadly drowned in the river here. And now, just up on the hill, it's a little white picket fence that now surrounds their graves on such a peaceful part of the river.
Now, if you're wondering about the forest that I'm driving through, it's called the Gumbawa State Forest. And it's said to be the second largest standing of red gums in the world next to a place just up the river a bit that we'll go to in a few days. Now, most of the trees all through here are juvenile, younger ones, as the larger ones were cut down years ago uh, for railway sleepers and for other uses along the river for the paddle steamers and such. Um, now, to give you some idea on how hard the men in this area worked, a good example is a man by the name of uh, Alexander Arbuthnot, who used to own a, a wood mill in this area in about the 1870s. And apparently he worked so hard that he had to get married on Christmas Day for that was the only day of the year that he allowed himself off. Well, we're at Tarambri now. We've travelled over 500 kilometres, but we've finally found some more water. So we'll stick the trial craft back in and we'll carry on a bit. Alright, well, I'm nearly ready. We're just going to head off to the weir just around the corner. In a second, I'm just pumping up the Quicksilver inflatable boat. And they're great things, these little inflatables. They're easy to blow up, they fit in the boot of your car. And if you don't want to get a, a big one like the trial craft, you can go for one of these. They can take anything from a two horsepower up to a 15. So they're great things, very easy to use by yourself, very easy for, for uh, teenagers to use, and they're great fun. So if you haven't got one and you like boating and you're not sure where to start, Quicksilver inflatable is a good spot. <laughs> Well... Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, that way you'll get notified to all my new videos when I upload them. And if you want to contact me, you can do so through my website, the link's in the description below. See you next time.